I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about the 10 principles of Burning Man. The 10 principles of Burning Man actually were not part of the burn at its inception. They were written down and shared in 2004. And the cool thing about these principles is that they make all the difference in the world. When you are following your bliss, when you are acting hedonistically, it can also be productive and inspiring and, and positive if you do so according to certain ideals. And that's what the principles allow people to do, to be free and not be destructive or selfish or any of those things that might hamper the, 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 your fellow people. And in fact, elevate the way you act with one another. And so something like leave no trace, which is a very simple, basic idea, right? It's that idea of, you know, take only photographs, leave only footprints. That your responsibility, if you are going to this place, this sacred place, is to make sure you leave it better than you, you saw it when you got here. And so that means no trace. That means no sequin, no nothing. And that, that ideal allows you to just do crazy things because you know that you're, held, you're holding yourself to an ideal. And there's, there's a number of, of the, the principles that are along that line, that, that ideal of you are empowered by these principles to be more than an attendee. You are a co-owner, a co-creator, and these are the principles that help you guide yourself to how you need to act and think about it. Civic responsibility, communal effort, those are the ones that kind of to me, encompass that. You are host. You are janitor. You are responsible for, for maintaining everything here. And if you see something that isn't the way it should be, your thought shouldn't be, someone needs to fix that. Your, your response should be, how can I help fix this? It's a duocracy. And that feeling of, I am every bit as responsible for this event as everyone else is, is huge. It's one reason why and when people ask, like, well, sh you know, how long should I go for? I go, the full week. The first week I went, I showed up on a Thursday and kind of showed up and the city's built and I had an amazing time. But I knew from then on I will never do that again, if at all possible. And so since then, so then at last next 15 years, I always came as early as possible because that feeling when you're a part of building the city, when you see your effort as a teeny tiny part of this massive, massive gift, you feel pride, you feel ownership, and you feel joy from everyone else's experience. Everyone else's joy gives you a little bit of joy because you help make it. And that's related to gifting, which is a topic I speak about frequently and I have a whole another several videos on it. So I'll just touch on it. Gifting is a tricky one. It took me a few years. I initially thought it meant barter and that we don't use money. You know, we trade, but that's not, that's not it at all. Barter is just like every traditional um, transaction based economy where equal value things are close to equal are exchanged and both parties feel like plus one minus one were equal. Gifting is like what happens in a family or on Christmas morning when you give something to somebody with the intention not of receiving something of equal value but with the intention of trying to make their life or day or moment a little bit better. And then if they receive it well then you get this joyous feeling from their experience. The plus one minus one becomes a plus one. They are joyous from receiving it. You get a plus one. Yay. You ever seen a little kid open a present that you gave them and they're like, Whoa! and you feel like, hmm. It's that, except all over the place. And if you notice the way I explain that, it only works when people learn how to receive. There is this pattern that we get kind of ingrained in us based on a transactional system where if somebody gives us something, 
we feel obligated to return. Someone says, oh, I love your hair. You go, thanks, I love your shoes. On, at Burning Man, people often go, oh, hey, here's, you know, I want to give you this sticker. And you go, oh, I, I don't have anything on me. I have something in my camp I can give you. And it, it's a rational thought, but it misses the point of gifting. When someone says, here's a sticker, your gift to them is saying, thank you. You have then empowered them, given them the ability to feel the plus one, the plus one. Oh, I did something nice for them. That makes me feel good. If you feel like, oh, I shouldn't accept this. I can't, I don't have anything. Then they, you, you rob them of that joy. And if you can really sink into that and start receiving, it's way more important than giving. The role of receiver, when done in a loving, accepting, uplifting way, is extremely powerful and appreciated. That doesn't mean just show up at Burning Man and plan everyone taking care of you, because we also have radical self-reliance as a principle. But it does mean that if you notice yourself not being able to receive, think, no, that's, that's why you're there. You're there to give? And if there are people there to give, there also have to be the people there to receive. Otherwise, all we have is this big marketplace where no one gets any joy out of these exchanges. It took a long time for that to really sink in with me, and then it changed my life. Because then you realize that you don't have to do it on Christmas morning or at the berm, but you have that opportunity everywhere. And suddenly, that old model of how to make yourself happier, of like getting more things, making yourself lighting yourself up a little bit, which gets harder and harder the more stuff you have, you start to realize, oh, I can make myself happier by making any of the billions of people on the planet happier. And that will change your life. Radical inclusion is another one of the principles. And this is another one I think is, is I, I don't, I love them all, but radical inclusion is that idea that everyone is welcome. It was interesting when the, uh, the tickets started to, you know, for a long time, there was enough tickets for everyone. There, you could buy them at the gate. Now they sell out. And one of the, 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 the choruses that came out was like, we got overrun by frat guys or, or whatever the, you know, people, the looky-loos or, and it's important to remember that everyone is welcome. The principles are about that idea that if anyone, whether Republican politician or frat boy or looky loo, if they commit themselves to the experience, they will be changed. It will be valuable for them and for the world. And so it, everyone is welcome. Related to that is radical self-expression and that all expression is welcome. We have been living, most of us, for most of our lives in a world that crushes radical self-expression. Coloring outside the lines, doing something wacky or weird is usually met by my least favorite sound in the universe, which is Pfft. I don't know how many times as a kid I, you know, tried to do something cool and then the cool kid went Pfft, and suddenly I went, back in line so embarrassed my head face flush and after lifetimes of people going Pfft, anytime we do anything different it's hard to break out but at burning man the idea is a principle here is radical self-expression and radical inclusion and so if you are expressing from the heart, whether that is your art, your dance, your singing, anything that you are doing, if you are expressing honestly, it is appreciated. It is what makes the magic happen. And people will love you for it. It doesn't mean that they might want to participate or join you. They might want to avert their eyes, but they'll hold their coat 
while you do it, whatever it is that you want to do. And that's why it's impossible to say what Burning Man is or what a burner is, is because what a burner is is someone who is radically self-expressing. And that expression takes forms way outside of any sort of categories. Some of it is aggressive, some of it is sexual, some of it is meditative, some of it is traditionally artistic on canvases. It's all artistic. And that shift of recognizing that it's all artistic, I think is, is what makes all of, is what kind of unites all these principles. When you start to practice these things, you start to realize that you have gifts. And those gifts is your art. And as you share those with the community and with the world, you elevate everyone. You make the event better. You give your gift, you light people up, they become joyous, you get more joyous. And this powerful spiraling and being given permission, being given not just permission, but a confident, you are an artist, gives you the ability to Find your way without the sound of pfft. So participation, it's right there on the tickets. No spectators. And that's the magical idea that there is no stage and no floor. Everyone at Burning Man is on the stage. Everyone is responsible for making the event better. There is no VIP rooms. There is no staff. I mean, there is some staff, but by all, for all purposes, everyone is responsible for all things, including entertainment, including eating, including everything. You are not there to check it out. You are there because you are it, and your gifts are part of the puzzle, part of the magic. Decommodification only really makes sense when you compare it to what you see everywhere in the world, when you see sponsorships and you see events and such that are dependent on sponsorship or movies dependent on sponsorship or magazines dependent on sponsorship. And I think it makes you a little bit more grateful to be aware of what a treat it is to be in a place without sponsorship, where anything that you see is not there because a corporation wants to associate with it, but because some individual, some fellow participant wants to share this with you. This is an interesting thing, that I think, to relate to our lives. A lot of people struggle with trying to find a way to make a living that is 100% in alignment with their, with their truth and their gifts. And, and this I would, I would warn people because when you get to a place where your livelihood, your com you commodify your art. And if you need to sell your art, whatever it is, in order to pay the rent, you have a connection. You've now commodified your art and you now have a connection with need and other people's reaction is important for, the, for your art. So you say you normally you like to draw big colorscapes of vaginally looking flowers. I might argue that you know you're kind of biting George O'Keefe, but let's say that's what you like to do. But then when you go out to try to sell it, you realize the ones that sell are the ones that have like local landmarks in it. So you start painting more and more things that integrate local landmarks because you can't help it. You got to make rent, and so that tug of the commodification, the necessary need, pulls you into it. And so it's good to be aware that sometimes it's good to have a place to earn your living in a place from integrity and do work that is in line with your values and also have a place to express yourself in a totally free way. For many people, that's the gift of Burning Man. Immediacy is 
one initially one of the things that I love so much about Burning Man is that you know there's no cell service out there, you know there's no internet, and so you have no the only experience that you're having is the one that you're having, and so we are returned to this immediacy that is is really in jeopardy in our culture. If you go to a restaurant. How often do you see people on their phones? I mean, they're with people and they're not there. They're not in, they're not having the experience that they're having. And so Burning Man, one of the principles is trying to adhere to that immediacy, the experience of the now. And so that we can actually connect in that now space. That comes up, I think, as a big challenge when people, it's participation as well as immediacy when you want to record people some people's art is photography or or video and if you're one of those people i would say set aside times when you are in documentary mode and you're capturing and then set aside the majority of your time to allow yourself to be present so that you can have immediacy so you can be a participant so you can radically self-express so that you can be radically included so that you can enjoy the demodification so that you can give your gifts and then you're a part of the communal effort and you will feel your civic responsibility all while leaving no trace as a little teaser a lot of people in the regionals like to tease that there is an 11th principle that of gratitude and whether it is a principle or not I am grateful for you. I look forward to seeing you either in the dust, in the world, or online, where we can support one another and encourage each other to live up to these principles and be our highest selves. You are a gift. You are an artist. I love you. See you at home.